so first let us understand what is rendering as i have indicated in the previous lecture basically it is about the disposal of unsound or condemned materials or carcasses or dead animals so normally the options available for disposal of such materials is by burial by incineration by composting or the rendering it is a compulsory requirement to dispose all these risky materials in a hygienic and scientific way for safety of the environment for the health of animal and human being so the burial incineration or composting are cost effective methods and it is not going to be much useful whereas rendering is one of the most suitable and modern method for economic disposal and utilization of the all such materials so what is rendering rendering is the recovery of fat from animal material by heating this is the classical definition of rendering but in modern days with the industrialization and growth of animal industry the term has grown to embrace all the processes leading to the conversion of all slaughterhouse offals into stock feeds fertilizers and fats so this is how the meaning of rendering is here you can see in the flow of cycle like meat processing leading to the material then process then cooking separating of fat then milling and then it is used in different purpose for livestock feeding or in the industry so now let us understand the objectives of rendering the first is economic utilization of fallen animals condemned carcasses and parts so anyway we have to dispose them up properly which will cost a lot for hygienic disposal whereas here by processing we can make lot of economic recovery the second is effective sanitary disposal of the by product so here it is a very effective and safe disposal due to the heat treatment and sterilization so sterilizing the products for safer use in livestock feed here all the materials are sterilized so it is safe and it can be used for feeding to different livestock reducing the moisture to prevent spoilage and easy to transport so here much of the moisture is removed after sterilization by the process of drying so it becomes easy to preserve and also the material becomes very less so easy to transport then recovering the fat from meal to prevent rancidity in this much of the fat is separated so that the other materials protein part will not get the effect of rancidity to reduce bird heat hazards to civil or defense aircrafts so all these condemned materials and live living tissue materials if we leave them simply around and without proper disposal it will invite all the birds and vultures at the sky and that causes a threat for all aircrafts so that can be reduced and to provide employment to weakest section of the society so by this proper industry we can generate lot of employment and economic return to the society now let us understand types of rendering as i have mentioned rendering is a process for heating and melting of fat and separation and preparing other meals so it can be done by different methods one is dry rendering where the steam is used for heating and cooking but it never comes in contact with the raw materials another one is wet rendering where the steam is directly injected along with the materials and that helps in melting the fat and cooking the materials and sterilization the third method is continuous low temperature here the the modern machinery is developed in which the materials are loaded and it goes through different stages continuously at a very low temperature so it has a better quality particularly the quality of the proteins and less damage to the nutrients and thirdly there is another method that is the high temperature continuous rendering where the same continuous process at a higher temperature is used now this rendering can be both ways one is edible rendering another is non edible rendering edible rendering means all the materials and products are suitable for human consumption or in human food 
naturally here two important condition applies one is the raw material should be of from healthy animals not from any condemned or dead materials and it should be preserved and handled in a most hygienic manner and thirdly the rendering machines everything should be maintained with the best sanitary condition so this rendering plant should be separate for edible purpose than the non edible rendering so edible rendering processes are processing operations and produce edible lard or tallow for use in food products edible rendering is generally carried out in a continuous process at low temperature so that is a, a special kind of process little bit we are going to discuss later the process usually consists of finely chopping the edible fat materials heating them with steam and then two stages of centrifugal separation so the major material is fatty tissues which are separated by trimming in the modern meat industry the visible fat is separated either from the surface that is subcutaneous fat and also from visceral depot fat all these fats are rendered and fat is purified which goes for a different kind of use in the food products or food industry the first stage is to separate the liquid water and fat mixture from the solids and the second stage further separates the fat from the water so this is briefly about the edible rendering now let us understand the inedible rendering materials for aesthetic or sanitary reasons are not suitable for human food are used for inedible rendering so all the materials which are not suitable mainly from condemned animals or con dead animals much of the inedible raw material is rendered using the dry method that is the dry rendering which we will discuss in more details this may be a batch or a continuous process in which the material is heated in a steam jacketed vessel to drive up the moisture and release the fat so this is the process of rendering we are going to discuss in details the material is first ground then heated to release fat and drive up the moisture percolated to drain liquid fat so in the in this process first there is a heating cooking and removing the moisture and fat becomes liquid which is separated then much of the remaining fat is pressed out of the solids which at this stage are called crackling so first stage much of the liquid fat is removed through percolation or like a filtration and then remaining fat with the solid is removed by force by using some mechanical techniques which again we will discuss in the next rendering section here we will see briefly about the three different methods of rendering that is dry rendering wet rendering and continuous rendering the first one dry rendering as i have told here the steam is applied for heating and sterilization but it remains outside the chamber there is a inner chamber where the raw material remains and the outside steam is applied for heating so there is a indirect heating which causes evaporation of moisture from the materials and creates a pressure in that pressure the temperature increases and the melting of fat happens and further higher pressure reduce, causes the sterilization of the material and after that the steam is allowed to go out and that's the drying stage and and after cooking or processing is over the fat is everything is taken out the fat is separated and the non fat that is other solid materials is dried and ground for make, making the meals in the second one wet rendering here the steam is directly injected into the cooking chamber it's a vertical chamber with a cone shaped bottom at the top there is a loading hole so here it is cooked and processed and sterilized after that it is allowed to settle in three different layers that is top liquid fat second the water and the bottom the solid material so this liquid materials are separated through valves and the solid material is removed and it is uh, further water is removed by centrifugation and then it is dried and made into meals and the third one that is the continuous low temperature here the material should be free from bones it should be minced into fine materials and then it is done melting uh, with applying steam injection at a low temperature it never goes beyond 90 degrees celsius after that it goes through a continuous separation that is a kind of decanter centrifuge where the water and the oil is 
simultaneously separated. After that, one more heating is done for sterilization and then centrifugation for separation of the oil and then it is cooled down uh, in a plate for solidification point and ground. Here we can see about the weight rendering. Here it will have a big vertical cylindrical cooking chamber. At the top there will be a very big loading hole and at the bottom part it will be conical and there will be a unloading big opening and above which there are certain valves for separating the liquids like water and oil. In the left side we can see a boiler, modern electrically operated boiler that is the source of steam. That is steam is used for all kind of processing either in wet rendering or in dry rendering. Here we can see the utilization of all fallen and carcass or dead animals. In the left side we can see the separation of hide and skin and there is also mention about the effluent treatment that we have discussed earlier. And then the major processing is by rendering that is the wet rendering where we can get the liquid fat and that fat goes for industrial use in the soap industry or many other uh, detergents or candle as a wax etc. Then we can prepare the meat meal or bone meal and that can go for livestock feeding or aquaculture feeding and then we can also get other kind of uh, products like bone meal. So this process depends on the raw material. If we process only bone in that case wet rendering is very important because bones has got very less moisture. So dry rendering is not very suitable for this. So wet rendering is very suitable for processing of bones and making the bone mills. Here once again we can see the details flow of operation in case of wet rendering. First the material that is the dead animal skin should be removed cut into pieces and that is the receiving then grinding then storage. So if we do not process immediately we have to store and then we have to disintegrate that is some machines are used to cut into pieces or break into pieces like crusher or pre-breaker. After that it goes to the rendering system and from there there will be processing and centrifugation so which separates the water and the oil so that oil part is separated and goes to storage or fat settling tank and then the water part is further evaporated from the solid material after cooking and then finally we get meals either it is meat meal or carcass meal or meat come bone meal or if it is only bone it is the bone meal and depending on the quality it can be used for livestock feeding or as a fertilizer. So here once again let us understand the process of weight rendering. The pre-ground material after receiving the condemned material or dead carcass it has to be ground and it is processed with direct stream at about 140 degree Celsius at 58 press PSI pressure for 3 to 4 hours. So it's a cylindrical cooking chamber I have mentioned loading is done from the top with a big manhole. Then after this processing or cooking the contents are allowed to form three layers of digested materials that is the uh, solid material, the water and liquid fat. So this fat being the lowest density it will be at the top then the water and the solid material being the heaviest in density it will be at the bottom. So three layers are formed after the cooking process. The liquid fat and water removed through respective valves. So there are specific valves for drainage. So the liquid fat and water is removed through that respective valve and then the bottom there is a very big gate valve for unloading the major solid material. Now this solid portion may contain 55% moisture and 15% fat. So this moisture and fat can be removed by pressing and that reduces the moisture content and the fat content and after that it will undergo the drying and then finally it will be undergoing the grinding and the, uh, the different kind of meals can be produced. That's briefly about the weight rendering process. So already we have discussed about weight rendering but this has got so many disadvantage and it's a old technology so nowadays it is becoming obsolete. So nowadays dry rendering is more important, more beneficial 
and the yield and commercial benefit is better with the dry rendering. So in this case, as you can see in the cycle, first there is dehiding and chopping of carcass. Whether it is a, if it is a dead animal, otherwise if it is a condemned carcass, it has to be cut into pieces. So before that, there is a, a pre-breaker which crosses and makes into smaller things which we will show the, see the diagram later. After that, loading is done in the uh, in the first floor level, there is a loading hopper through which the loading is done. After that, the steam is applied in the outer chamber. In case of dry rendering, there is an outer chamber and there is an inner chamber. So through loading, material goes to the inner chamber and the steam will be applied in the outer chamber. So indirectly, there is heating and that causes cooking or melting of fat. And when the lot of steam generates and increase the pressure, the temperature increases and that causes sterilization. In this process, fat also extracted and we get the liquid oil. Now at this stage, when sterilization is done, we leave it for drying. So the moisture is allowed to go out by opening a valve and that moisture along with uh, some gases and odor, it is it is it is put into a jet condenser and that condenser again the steam become liquid along with all the water it goes out so after that there is a drying process then there is a milling or grinding and then there is packaging so this is briefly about dry rendering which we will see again in more details here we can see at a glance uh, a, a dry rendering plant in a big industrial setup if we see the left side picture, there is a cylindrical structure which is the main part for rendering that is called dry renderer or dry rendering cooker which works like an autoclave with a different stages by steam but the cooking happens indirectly. In the right side there are other units like pre-baker unit, there is a grinding unit or there is a fat separation unit, all this we are going to see later. Here is the different steps in dry rendering process. So first is the flaying that is if it is a dead animal we have to remove the skin. Otherwise if it is coming from the slaughter process the skinning will be already done only the condemned carcasses or different parts will come. Second is crushing or pre-breaking. So in case of large animal it is a very huge portion it has to be crushed into smaller part. So for which there is a machine that is called crushing machine or pre-breaking machine. In that it will be crushed into smaller part and it will be collected into ch chambers which will be hoisted and loaded into the renderer. So that is the loading. So before loading all the outlets particularly the major unloading outlets should be closed. Steam should be already put on and then the loading should be done. And once the loading is done it should be closed. Then there is preheating or melting. So already steam is supplied which will slowly transmit the heat to the inner chamber and when the temperature increases melting will start and when the steam comes the pressure will increase and that will give higher temperature that leads to the sterilization. Once the sterilization needs some time once it is over it goes to the next stage that is called drying. During this time there is specific valve for outletting the moisture. So once we open the valve all the steam will go out and that is the process of drying which may take long time. After the drying is over the processing is stopped the steam pressure is reduced and when it comes to zero level then only the uh, the outlet is open and it is taken into the percolating tank. Unloading is done in the percolating tank where the much of the liquid fat get directly separated and remaining fat with the solid is separated mechanically that is the fat separation. After that this solid material is dried and then it goes for grinding and after that it is going for packaging. So these are the steps for dry rendering. Before we discuss about the rendering plant, let us have a brief idea about the rendering process. So rendering is a process in which the animal tissues can be processed into valuable products like fat and other different kind of meals. So here is a brief outline about the flow chart that is the raw materials, there is a size reduction, then processing with steam which do the sterilization also. After that the fats and oils are separated and rest of the solids are separated. This fat part is 
going through certain processing and stored and it goes for different kind of industrial use or for livestock feed in ration making and the all other materials solid part it, it is further dried and made into meals it can be different kind of meals like blood meal meat meal or carcass meal depending on the raw material so next we will see the actual plant that is for rendering so here once again we will understand certain important aspect for dry rendering process the firstly the dead animals or carcasses are processed mainly by rendering in steam jacketed renderer that is outside there is a steam and inside there is a main chamber for the raw materials so here the materials never comes in direct contact with the steam steam remains outside and the materials remains inside chamber it comes from directly from the loading mouth it is a batch or continuous process and the material is first cooked at 100 degree celsius for 30 minutes so at the first stage the temperature reaches 100 degree and there will be a cooking and that produces the steam and increases the pressure so at this time that pressure goes very high up to 45 pound per square inch naturally at this time temperature will rise up to 140 degree celsius and minimum 20 minutes if we keep that leads to sterilization once the sterilization happens then we can reduce the steam and reduce the pressure and then when it comes to zero pressure we can open the valve for drying for escaping the steam in this case the yield of finished product that is the carcass meal is up to 20 percent more than the weight rendering process because in, in weight rendering lot of proteins and other things are go, going waste with the water so the, there is lot of wastage and yield is less in case of weight rendering. So now we will understand different steps of dry rendering operation with these photographs. The first one is pre-breaking so I have discussed about it when I was talking about the rendering plant so there is a pre-breaker. Here the large carcasses or parts are put into this machine for crushing and breaking. That is the first step. And then the left side we can see the second loading operation. So if it is a large plant, all the materials in the container will be hoisted with the help of hydraulic hoist and then it will be poured into the loading chamber. So the third step is cooking or melting and then sterilization. So we can see this is the big uh, horizontal uh, rendering chamber. So there will be after loading the temperature will increase and the, that will lead to the preheating and melting of fat generation of steam. So that's the cooking stage and after that when steam in, accumulates very heavily the pressure increases and then the temperature increases and the sterilization happens and after that the, when the sterilization is enough the steaming is stopped and the pressure is brought down and then the valve is opened for the steam to escape and the next step is fourth that is the unloading once the cooking is over the unloading mouth will be opened and it whole material will be taken into a chamber called percolating tank so in this i have said earlier there will be holes fine holes through which the liquid fat can go down and that can be taken to the fat collection tank and below that there will be steam supply so that fat remains liquid. This is the fourth stage. Now the fifth step is fat separation. That is after pouring into the percolating tank, much of the liquid fat goes down and gets separated but the solid will still have large amount of fat. So this fat will not be separated easily which is separated by mechanical force as I have discussed in the previous lecture by using the mechanical centrifuge or the fat extraction system that is cylindrical screw or by the hydraulic press. So either of this method can be used for mechanical force to separate the remaining fat from the solid materials because here our major principle is to remove much of the fat possible because if it remains with the um, uh, solid materials it will cause oxidation. So maximum fat is separated and fat is further purified, stored and used separately and the solid material is processed into meal. So after the fat is separated by mechanical force that is the cracklings are further dried and made into powder. So different kind of grinders are used for this purpose. Most commonly the hammer mill is used 
where it is ground into powder and then there will be a cyclone separator where the air and powder is separated and it goes to a, a packing unit that is the filter bag or, or, or the normal packing uh, unit from the mill. The last part the, that is the packaging, the ground meat come bone meal or meat meal is often packaged into gunny bags of 50 kg or 100 kg capacity. The material thus packed is stored batch wise for further use or marketing. So the third method I have mentioned is continuous low temperature rendering. Here all the steps are connected and everything happens through a, a continuous process by using some conveyors. So at the first chamber the material is kept for loading then it undergoes for initial grinding and then there is cooking process and after that the fat separation happens directly and then the solid portion undergoes drying and then undergoes grinding and finally the uh, product comes out at, at the other end. So we will discuss more details about this process in a separate lecture. As I mentioned the main important product from rendering is meat meal or bone meal or meat cum bone meal or sometimes carcass meal. So this depends on the type of material. If there is no bone only it is meat tissue then it will be meat meal. If there is only bone it will be bone meal. Whereas if there is a whole carcass then it is a carcass meal having also bone. So it can be called meat cum bone meal. But the basic uh, operations and process are almost similar and the basic principle are also similar. The first thing is product has to be grinded or minced. If it is bone then we need crushing machine or pre breaker. Then second is this material is preheated and for melting of fat and for the moisture to come and thirdly it has to be sterilized because this material will have huge amount of pathogens. So it, if it has to be used for livestock and other purpose it should be made easy. So sterilization is very important and then the uh, liquid and solid part is separated that is the liquid fat it is separated because if it is with the solid material it will cause oxidation and spoilage and the moisture part is very important first part is drying by during the process itself and remaining moisture is done by extra drying so that the meals whatever we make it becomes very stable it don't get spoiled easily once the moisture is removed and it is already sterilized. And finally these products it may be having the large pieces etc. So it has to be ground and made into powder. So these are the basic steps or principles for making all these products. So here again once we can see how the meat meal is prepared. Preparation of meat meal mainly by dry rendering. So first there is carcass if it is dead animals skinning or flaying should be done. Otherwise if it is condensed material it has to be cut into pieces into a smaller size up to 5 or 7 kg and hoops, horns etc should not be put along with this or the viscera uh, like the, the GI tract content should not be there. Then it is loaded into trolley and through which it is hoisted and put into the higher platform for loading purpose that is the um, at a higher level and then it undergoes dry rendering process around 75 psi for 3 hours. Now after the cooking is over that is called crackling it is unloaded on the percolating tank where there is a screening happen liquid fat goes uh, and gets separated then remaining fat is further separated by centrifugation and then there is a screening of meat pieces from bones if we want only meat meal the bones are separated by screening and then we do the milling and we can get meat meal or powdered meat meal. Here we can see the general composition of uh, comparative in different products. In case of meat cum bone meal moisture is 7 and poultry by products blood meal and feather meal all are 7. In case of crude protein it is about 50% in meat cum bone meal poultry by products 58% blood meal 88 and feather meal 86. Fat content in case of meat cum bone meal 8.6, poultry byproducts 13, blood meal 1, feather meal 3.3, calcium 10.1, 3.3 and 0.33, 0 
phosphorus it is mid compound meal only it will have high that is 5 others 1.7 0.25 and 0.55 and the energy content in case of mid compound meal it is a little bit less because of the presence of bones so 27540 then 3300 in case of poultry byproducts, blood meal 3400 and feather meal around 3000. Here we will see the BIS standard for different kind of these products. Here we can see the meat meal, meat cum bone meal and blood meal. The moisture content here it is 10, 10 and 8. The protein content 70% in case of meat meal, 45 in case of meat cum bone meal and 80 for blood meal. The fat content it is 6, 10 and 2 in case of blood there will be no fat almost. Then phosphorus content 1 for meat meal, 5 to 6 in meat cum bone meal because of the bone the phosphorus content will be high and that is very important particularly for bone meal. And then acid insoluble as it is 2%, 2% and 1.5% and total as is 5% in case of blood meal. Here briefly we will discuss about the quality and use of products. So first of all the microbial analysis, there should be total absence of pathogens like Salmonella, E. coli or Clostridium and it should be free from any odor that carcass meal should have a pleasant odor and there should not be any rancidity even after 6 months of storage at room temperature and the utility is carcass meal is used in livestock feeding especially poultry and pig or it is used for fertilizer as fertilizer in horticulture or floriculture and the technical fat or the different kind of fat like lard or tallow it can be used again in livestock ration or in the soap industry for making soap or candles as wax etc. Here we can see different photographs like rendered fat then meat cum bone meal or this can be used in making different kind of pet foods or dog biscuit we can see the photograph of different kind of meat cum bone meal or poultry carcass meal or technical fat. Here we can see a brief story of rendering. In the first column we can see from the animal the meats are separated and that goes to the market as a meat or different kind of meat products and to the restaurants. And then number two is rendering process where all the non-edible things or rejected materials are grinded, cooked, then fat is separated and that fat goes to different kind of industrial use like as a tallow, lard, for wax and etc. And the protein part it is used as a supplement for feeding to the livestock or as fertilizer like meat meal, blood meal, meat cum bone meal, poultry byproducts etc. And in the third column we can see that rendered ingredients has other use like the separated fat can be used for biofuel production or it can be used for wet food, livestock feeding, aquaculture feeding or it can be used as fertilizer and many other industrial uses in the, as a soap production or many other um, uh, materials from this rendered products. So now we are at the end of today's lecture. The more details can be found in this book, the rendering. There will be details discussion on this different kind of rendering as we have discussed briefly today about the what is rendering, the objectives, the different aspect of it, different methods like wet rendering, dry rendering and briefly of course about continuous low temperature rendering and also little bit about the composition and quality. We, I will make another separate video on some of the details like little more details about the comparative analysis of three different methods of rendering, especially some more details about the continuous low temperature rendering and some aspect like factors affecting the quality or success of rendering and different quality analysis aspect. All these things I will make a separate video especially for the PG students. So for details learning for undergraduate students we can you can read from this book there are about 10 pages with uh, precisely discussed on different aspects thank you